Hi folks, in today's video I am going to be talking a little bit about my experience with Linux Mint Debian Edition 3, codename Cindy. So, um, basically I've been running LMDE, Linux Mint Debian Edition, on my Triton laptop now uh, for a good couple of weeks actually, maybe even the best part of a month. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about my experiences, so I'm not going to give you a desktop tour or anything like that. In fact, quite frankly, my desktop, as you can see, I'll put up some screenshots just so you get an idea about what my desktop looks like. But um, LMDE comes with a uh, cinnamon desktop in the traditional Linux Mint style that we've all come to know and love. So it's, from a visual point of view, and even from the sort of UI standpoint, it's pretty identical to the standard Linux Mint uh, editions that are based on the uh, Ubuntu base. But the purpose here, and I've got the Linux Mint uh, Debian Edition website up here, or web page specifically on uh, from linuxmint.com, and it says that its main goal is for the Linux Mint team to see how viable our distribution would be and how much work would be necessary if Ubuntu was to ever disappear. LMDE aims to be as similar as possible to Linux Mint, but without using Ubuntu. The package base is provided by Debian instead. There are no point releases in LMDE, so you don't get 3.1 or anything like that like you get with the standard releases. Uh, it's all very much when a new version of Debian comes, up, uh, comes out, it seems that there's a new version of Linux Mint Debian Edition to match. Uh, so it says, other than bug fix fixes and security fixes, Debian-based packages stay the same. But Mint and desktop components are updated continuously. Now, there is a separate repository. So you can see the Debian sort of based repositories in the software sources. And you can also see that Linux Mint have added in their own repositories uh, on top of that. Um, so... Um, yeah, basically, when ready, newly developed features get directly into um, LMDE, whereas they are staged for inclusion on the next upcoming Linux Mint point releases. So it seems here to imply that the latest version of the, say, for example, Cinnamon desktop is on the Debian edition, uh, which might possibly be a newer version than you might get on the latest point release of uh, the standard edition, which is quite interesting. Now, the first thing to note about LMDE is that it's only available with the Cinnamon desktop um, as a download as an ISO, and um, it's, uh, but it gives you 32-bit and 64-bit versions as well, which is kind of interesting, I think, because um, there are a limited number of uh, Linux distributions out there that are still supporting 32-bit uh, processors, and uh, to be honest, I wouldn't expect Mint to be one of them. Um, I would have expected them to sort of streamline it by now, but you know, Linux Mint is as Linux Mint does, and to be honest, they've always got a good track record when it comes to um, satisfying their base. They're, you know, it, it's one of those distributions that has a strong community, a very strong community behind it, and that's part of its its strength. So um, it could very well be that there's a significant part of the Linux Mint community that still use or enjoy the use of 32-bit distributions. So uh, yeah, uh, okay. So uh, what's it like day to day to use? To be honest, surprisingly similar to the standard Linux Mint. Like, I think they've done a really good job. I think they're very much on to their sort of, you know, to accomplish their mission. That if Ubuntu were to disappear uh, tomorrow, I think that they would be perfectly able to go to LMDE as their primary distribution. In fact, there's a part of me that thinks that they should kind of do that now. Um, now, here's all, I, I, one of the reasons I thought about going for Linux Mint Debian Edition uh, is because I hear that Debian-based distributions on the whole tend to be lighter than uh, Ubuntu-based distributions. Ubuntu put a significant number of layers on top of Debian. They sort of change it quite a lot. And, and Ubuntu is known for just being a little, uh, you know, a little bit heftier when it comes to system resources than something like Debian. To be honest, I've never done side-by-side -side comparisons, so I don't know if, if that's an absolute truth. But uh, I've been running LMDE. And it's been running really quite fine in terms of performance, but probably about every bit as well as standard Linux Mint. I can't actually say that I've noticed too much of a difference. In fact, I think the biggest difference is that the is the version of Firefox. They have the version 60 ESR version, which is I think extended support release. I think it is, or I could I could possibly be. Um, misremembering that initialism but yeah like it's uh, it, 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 it's a different version of firefox i think it's like their their lts equivalent kind of version long you know like a long term version of, of firefox and um I think I probably would have preferred like the more standard, the more up-to-date version of Firefox that you get with the standard mint versions and with Ubuntu and, and that much. But for all intents and purposes, uh yeah, it runs the same. Now I've got to say I don't know if the Cinnamon desktop is the right desktop for this particular laptop. This laptop is 
um, an entry level laptop and I do notice that specifically when I'm watching streams the fans spin up quite a lot um, now the Triton is quite a noisy laptop when it gets put under um, a lot of system load at the, at the best of times so I always try and keep it as light as possible and I don't think Cinnamon can really be called a lightweight desktop. It's incredibly user-friendly. It hasn't had any bugs whatsoever in any of the times that I've used it in the past couple of years. So, um, so it seems to, uh, you know, and, and it's so intuitive. It seems to be, you know, it has all the features that I need. It looks great. Like, it looks like a very coherent desktop environment uh, in a way that Mate and XFCE and even to a degree um, KDE Plasma do not. I think I think you can possibly make an exception for KDE Plasma because, um, but it just, it, it seems like there's a lot of, um, uh, a faff, you know, a lot of unnecessary stuff that's cut away from the cinema desktop, and it seems minimalist in that way. Like I, I see very few options that get in my way that I don't think I'd never ever need to use. So from that point of view, I think the cinnamon desktop is a beautifully designed desktop just uses a few too many system resources for, for my liking unfortunately the theming that actually came with it as well it included the new linux mint theme but also the old mint x theme and i gotta say i did actually kind of put the mint x theme back on the older theme um just because i kind of like the old beveled theme i'm not too big of a fan of flat themes i can see their their visual appeal to a degree but um i don't know i just kind of felt that their um the, the, the Mintex theme was perfectly fine. I would hope that in the future, when they continue and develop more themes for Linux Mint over time, that they would at least keep their old ones around because it just gives you a bit of an end user choice. But uh, I always say this with Linux Mint distributions is that Linux Mint tends to be the distribution that needs the least amount of altering and customizing out of the box. I can pretty much install one or two applications that I would otherwise need to use and I would uh, be ready to go. Uh, one thing I will say about LMDE is the installation installation process, while largely the same, is a little bit more involved. I was presented with a partition manager um, and uh, and I didn't actually assign enough swap space, so I actually ran into occasional few problems uh, when I was live streaming. If uh, those of you that were watching a particular live stream, I think it was my last one where I was playing Hitman 2, uh, you guys uh, might have seen my uh, the, the Triton um, Firefox crash a few times. Uh, and I actually worked out what was causing that crash. It was because I didn't assign any swap space and I was running a whole bunch of various different streaming previews to make sure everything was, was upline. So, uh, uh, upline? Online. So, um, yeah, like I, 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 I sort of poorly partitioned this because this computer doesn't exactly have the world of memory should have put a bit of swap space in there i was maybe uh you know thinking that i could get by without it um i could uh, you know it, it uh, when i pushed it to the limit it um it did present a few problems now of course with linux mint linux mint is well known for supporting flat packs out of the box this is no exception, although I've got to admit, when it comes to flat packs, I tend to just uh, default to the command line because it's the same on every distribution, so you don't get any kind of conf confusion. In fact, I think flat packs are one of those, um, uh, you know, methods of software distribution or, or applications or whatever where the command line is actually more user friendly than the GUI because the GUI changes from distribution to distribution. It's usually um, put into the package manager in some way, it's sort of sewn in, um, and it's different for every distribution. So you've got to sort of relearn the GUI every single time you switch over to a distribution. With the command line, it's the same on Debian-based distributions, on, on Red Hat-based distributions, on you know everything. So that is pretty wonderful there. Uh, so yeah, I've been using a lot of flat packs as I sort of have been doing a lot lately anyway. I find them to be just more st just usable, stable, um, they do the job, they do the job well. Uh, I think native packages as well probably do the job just as well. I'm just giving Flatpak a bit of a spin here. But yeah, like the Linux Mint Debian edition supports Flatpaks every bit as well as their main version. Um, and I think with their Flatpaks, that can also um, make up for the older packages in the Debian base. So, you know, if, if for example, Linux Mint Ubuntu, I'm just going to call it Linux Mint Ubuntu edition at this point now, um, were to were to go away tomorrow, it would be absolutely phenomenally cool if Linux Mint developed their own flat pack repository and then just had a lot of the Mint applications uh, run out through that. I think that would be really cool. And then Mint applications could just run on any distribution going. Um, so that's really kind of cool as well. Now, here's a bit of a side note uh, when it comes to, uh, to packages as well. Uh, I've actually been trying out Pure VPN, which uh, is a VPN company that actually have a Linux app. They release it as a dev and an RPM package file. Uh, I've yet to find a VPN that actually released their client as a flat pack or an app image or, or a snap or anything like that. I could be wrong. If I am, please let me know in the description below. Low, of course um, 
they still seem to be packaging them out the old way. But and the peer VPN, which is a command line .dev file, which actually works really quite well, uh, actually installed on on LMDE um, pretty nicely as well. So um, so that was pretty good. So uh, if you are a pure VPN user, their uh, their uh, their Debian app works works uh, wonderfully. Um, yeah, but in all all uh, uh, seriousness, the uh, user interface is, is is every bit as as wonderful as as Linux Mint. Its usability is every bit as you know good as as Linux Mint. I've got very 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 few complaints, and in fact, the biggest one is that it doesn't come with the Mate desktop. I think that that is a, a particularly uh, you know or, or XFCE. I would I could live with the XFCE one. I would actually prefer Mate because it tends to have better support for uh, touchpads uh, in my in my experience, but. Yeah, like if, if if Linux Mint Debian Edition came out with a Mate desktop, and I know you can install it on top of that as well. But one of the the beauty of uh, you know one of the beautiful things about Linux Mint is the out of the box experience. It's the fact that it is a distribution that I would, if there was someone that was thinking about getting into Linux that I wasn't able to support, maybe they live too far away or, or whatever, but they were keen enough to actually want to try out Linux. Linux Mint would be a direction that I could very well see myself pointing them in because it, it has such a great setup out of the box. It's intuitive, um, not just to, to, to Windows converts, but just to, to, to anyone. It just feels easy to use. Um, and and, it, uh, and a lot of the tweaking and, and stuff has, has been done for you as well. It's the small touches that really make Linux Mint what it is, as well as the, the community around it. The uh, the support, support community is absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, all in all, an absolutely wonderful experience. And if this computer could handle the Cinnamon desktop, I, I would be very, very tempted to, to keep on with it. Um, part of me thinks that I might be trying uh, Linux MX, possibly, and doing a side-by-side, -side, not quite a side-by-side -side comparison, but doing, doing a comparison between uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition and MX Linux, because they're both based on Debian. So it'd be interesting to see some of the differences. Um, MX Linux has a bit more of a history behind it, but I've been following some of their social media over on Mastodon, and um, and it's always nice to have a distribution available over on Mastodon. Just, yeah. but um, yeah, and and MX Linux seem to be working really hard on on improving the distribution there. So it seems like there are some exciting things afoot in in that world. But yeah, now going back to LMDE uh, three, all in all, an absolutely wonderful distribution. Um, practically zero complaints other than the fact that it just doesn't come with the Mate desktop. Uh, it's intuitive, it looks great, it's user-friendly, very little um, configuring that you need to do out, out of the box. And I know I know very well that I'm repeating myself here because I, I guess I don't have too much more to say. I've reviewed Linux Mint-based distributions on uh, Linux Mint distributions on this channel countless times, and the reviews tend to remain pretty consistent. It's a wonderful distribution um, for the use case that it fulfills. Um, so yeah, like I say, if you want to get away from Ubuntu for one reason or another, or if one company sort of ends up buying Canonical and and you don't like the idea of um, uh, you know of, of using a distribution produced by that company, then yeah, LMDE might be a good alternative path to go down. So anyway, I think that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know, of course, your thoughts down in the comment section below. Um, and I'm just going to, of course, plug my Twitch channel. I am on Twitch. I hoping next year to actually stream quite a lot more. And if you guys are not a fan of Twitch, I have a mirror of that, which is a gaming channel called Gaming with Werewolves. You guys liked punny titles, so I thought I might run with that one. I'll put links to those down in the description. Um, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. And so has Linux Mint Debian Edition. I mean, it really is a good distribution.